We need to go again. You didn't hit record. I didn't hit record. Did you not? I did not. Are you serious? I'm dead serious. <laughs> yeah, I figured you were serious when you interrupted. Yikes. One more clap. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Uncaged Creativity Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Daniel Sherman, here with co-host. I did not hit record. He did not hit record. We actually Take were doing for like five Take minutes. Two. Dude, it's not as bad as... Remember when I did it when... <laughs> We did the episode with Giovanni. We, we did half like of the episode. 25 minutes in, and he realized he didn't record the audio. And that was a rough one. Uh, that was yeah. a rough one. So, that, to, to, so that's the audio button? Yeah, the red one. Yeah. yeah. The right. audio button. Yeah. Today we have uh, one of our really good friends, Mr. Mr. Richard, over here. Photographer, videographer, right? Buff guy. We went back to photographer, no more videographer. No, just photographer. No more. No more. Why is that? A wedding broke me. Oh, no. Wedding broke me. Yeah, you know, that's now the third time I've heard today about videographers hating weddings. So, it it's checks out. A, it's, a, it's a visionary thing. Yeah. Hmm. You have a vision. They have a vision. They don't understand what it looks or how, yeah. what it takes and uncompromising. Interesting. Very when you interesting. submit and commit, complete a video and yeah, you get shut down and... Wow, what do you do? Mm-hmm. Can't do anything else about it. If it's yeah. shot a certain way, it's just that's the way it's shot. And sometimes the bride, usually the bride, has a different idea of how she wanted it to look. Right? Yeah. That's how it yeah. is. So for those of you watching, you might know Richard's work, even if you've never seen him, although probably a lot of you have seen him as well. He's uh, shot some behind-the-scenes stuff for What You Want with us. He came and shot some stuff for Title Track, Uncaged with us, and he was in the video for uncaged many of you call him pitbull yeah. uh there's been pitbull, other names that's, that's a new one there's been other names he's been referred to as well travis parker yeah travis parker so question that i asked you like two minutes ago but christian ruined the question <laughs> how did yeah. you get into photography when and how did that happen for you as if you've never told it before yes <laughs> so well now now you have a better idea like better chance to like word your thoughts you're so prepared now i'm very unprepared yeah uh -oh. that's okay we are too <laughs> yeah as you can see it's true it only takes an hour culture culture based okay it's, it's always been my my drawn in view of it so and why is that do you know was there something that triggered that or childhood growing up um being around the communities of other cultures grew me yeah you know the filipinos Definitely, definitely was one for me. Gotcha. That's cool. And then uh, the African-American, you know, F uh, even Fiji, uh, Indian, India. Yeah. Cool. How did you get your hands on your first camera? First camera, black and white film. Yeah? Black and white film. Whoa. Was it a gift? Did you go out and buy it? Was it a whole thing? I had to buy it. Buy yeah. it 50 bucks. Whoa. Wow. $50. With the, with the 50 millimeter. When was that? Uh, what five years, six years ago? Oh, it's not too bad. Then you make it sound no. like it was like a decade ago. No, no, I got into the arts when I was in early in high school. Oh, okay, my freshman year. How old are you? We skipped that. How old am I? Yeah, twenty six. I lie about it too much. That's okay. We'll go. With you don't remember anymore. No, <laughs> you've lied about it so many I, times. Yeah. Like, how old am I? Check your watch. <laughs> thirty four. I'm I'm thirty four now. You look younger than that. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. True. Of course. True fact. It's the makeup you did for me. Yeah, yeah, it. yeah. Yeah, we got powdered up. Yeah. He didn't powder me up. You, don't you never it. offer. You don't need it. You not once have offered to powder me up. It's like when you're in a relationship and, you know, you date the person and they wear makeup all the time and eventually you live with them and, like, they don't put makeup on anymore. That's kind of where I'm at with you. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to feel about that. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know what I think about that. You became the housewife. Oh, my goodness. I really don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> Pretty good role to have. Is it? Yeah. Okay. I'll take it then. Yeah. So Richard, how did, oh, I, I want to I go you first. You can ask. Are you going to ask the most important, most important question? 
Because you have to you know ask. You can ask. No, I asked it last time. You can ask sure? it this time. Yeah. Okay. I Most feel- important question you'll ever get asked. That's what's about to happen. You're gonna have to really think about this, because this you can take time. You can take time. This determines like what others will think of you for the rest of your life. Pretty much. Mm. You ready? No. What is your? <laughs> Why are you laughing, Artie? Because <laughs> he said no. <laughs> you started asking anyway. <laughs> what is your second favorite cereal? Second favorite cereal. <laughs> His face when he realized what you asked. It was just funny. Don't even say your first. Yeah, we don't care at all about your first favorite. So just no. your second. Yeah. I don't know. I like the marshmallows, man. Marshmallows? What kind of marshmallows? Like like, like the, the Lucky, Lucky Charms? Charms? Yeah. yeah. That's a good answer. I've never heard that answer. But like that is lying. a good answer. What? I feel like you're lying. Has someone said Lucky Charms? No. Oh. But like you say, no, I legit think that's a good answer. I have a bag of just the marshmallows from Lucky Charms in my pantry. I always feel like I got robbed because it's dope. I got bamboozled every time and not enough marshmallows. Yes, 100%. I'm right with you. That is a great answer. It's like my seventh. What do you, what's your serious? Is it actually? Are you serious? I'm dead serious, dude. Lucky Charms is like, why? If not enough marshmallows, not enough marshmallows. If there's enough, but see, that's good. That's good. Because it makes That's you a, want to keep eating more. Exactly. It's a great strategy. One time when I was a kid, I got a whole pack of Oreos. And I was very patient. So I like took the cookies apart and I scraped off the marshmallow into a big bowl. The cream? The cream. Yeah, and the I, ate, I ate the ball of cream. Like it was... That sounds was, really good. You good. know, they sell... Have you seen... So they've... They, total tangent. Nothing to do with anything. That's fine. Oreo sold normal Oreos. And then double stuff. And then they came out with more stuff. And then most stuff and mega stuff. And then now they have one where it's literally there's a side of just the cookies and there's a side of just cream. So you can decide your own so quantity like scoop of cream. Dip. Yeah. Like you can choose how much cream is in the Oreo now. I didn't know this was a thing. Because it's there's so much debate over it. now there's Oreo thins where it's like barely you any like cream. That? No. Well you did the frozen ones? Yeah, oh, ones? you brought those, huh? Yeah, those were good. They were, they were the mint ones, though. Mm-hmm. That's different. It's mm-hmm. a totally different thing. Yeah, totally different that thing. That was the, the most important question you'll ever be asked in your life. Ever. Thank you. Really. Of course. So, what, what, What's you your cereal? Totally you never my, my second favorite, Captain Crunch. Captain Crunch? No, yeah. no. Captain Crunch. Captain. It's kind of basic. It's my answer too, so I can't be mad about it. Okay, do you, but so we do have an age gap. Yeah. Do you remember the Flintstones? Yes. Yeah. The, the vitamins, dude. Yep. Yeah, those mm-hmm. were like it tasted like chalk. Yeah. Yeah, I remember those. Okay. Yep. I don't think they did anything. No. What are you? Hold on one second. What do you have going on? You didn't silence your phone. So disrespectful. There we go. Who we're is done. it? Who was it? Your mom. She has your number. Yeah, dude, she invited me over for steak. Remember? That oh, one time? Yeah. That, yeah. That, that did actually happen. <laughs> that was a true story. <laughs> we never did that. We got to do that. Let's do that in December. Okay. Okay. Good you, talk. you know what was really funny? I think I told Kim this. When we went to, I didn't actually meet your mom until we saw you play with UFN. And you played yeah. With but she DM'd me before, like talking about your project. Yeah. So she knew who you were. Yeah. So she approached me and I was like, I don't know who you are. She's tall. She's yeah, taller. And she's very tall. Yeah. yeah. So I was like really caught off guard. Yeah. Yeah, but she's I nice. have true story. I have no idea how you t- you two met. Like I oh, don't know I want, at all. I wanted to ask that question, but I'm really glad that you just like segued into it. Yeah, really unnaturally, to be honest. No, that was good. Who cares? Otherwise, I would have been like, "How did we meet, Richard?" Like, yeah, because I really want to know. Was it Tinder or Hinge? Oh, oh okay. Because totally because with Hinge, like you get to ask prompt questions, and it like makes it. <laughs> and you asked, "What's your second favorite cereal?" Yeah, and then Richard would just like Lucky Charms. I was like, match. <laughs> <laughs> yeah true love super we lined up for sure yeah yeah, yeah. so how did you actually meet tinder <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't want to look like a dirt bag but yeah tinder <laughs> <laughs> is there a tinder for videographers and photographers that actually would be hilarious well there's one for like farmers and yeah farmers only like, oh no why do you know the website what yeah everyone knows about that oh yeah everyone knows about that they right? promoted that so much on tv it was everywhere yep Trying to watch football games? Advertisement. Everywhere. They were trying to promote like more agriculture at the time. Mm-hmm. So they were trying to get more farmers made. 
Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, they're they're trying to thicken. Is up that the why? Yeah. I never knew that. <laughs> That's funny. They're trying to thicken wow. up the population. You think a it bit. worked too? Probably did. Really I don't did. know, man. I bet it did. We're lacking agriculture right I now. I guess we won't fully know until like ten years or twenty years that when they're sucks. That's adult, the about. baby farmers or adult farmers. There's gonna be a whole generation of farmers only kids. That's crazy. How were you made farmers, Doc? Um. <laughs> <laughs> Too good. Okay. Too good. How were we? Uh you tell the story. I think I remember it. Actually, I don't I, I, I don't I, remember it. I, I do don't. remember it. You're the weirdo with the camera working out with the big bicep. That checks out. Yeah. The only reason why I say weirdo because most people have their phone, right? Mm-hmm. I can't stand the whole phone thing. It, it, it has its purpose, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. In the moments, you don't have time to bring a DSLR with you mm-hmm. or a mirrorless, whatever. But he he actually set up a tripod in the gym. Hold on, you brought your camera that whole thing you're looking to right take now. pictures of yourself. No, he wasn't just oh. doing pictures. He was doing film of yourself. Yeah. Seriously. And, and, and I had mad respect for that. That is hilarious. A lot of people are looking at him like, <laughs> oh, weirdo with a big that. camera. I'm like, you're a weirdo with a cell phone. Like, <laughs> because I, I knew for a person to have some piece of equipment like that, you're at yeah. least two grand deep. Yeah. With, with a body and True. lens. With just the body and lens and battery. Like, you're two grand deep. And he had a, maybe, I think he had a filter. I had that. Yeah. Maybe not, but um. So you're two grand deep. So, so, so you're somewhat invested in that. You, you know, you had a gift or something of that nature. Yeah. But the fact that he was even taking the time to to film and in the fitness industry, I have a big respect for. It, if if you're consistent, you yeah. Know? And consistency is everything. And he was very consistent. He was dedicated, shredded, huge biceps. You know, his yep. biceps get me every time. Yep, it's true. It's true. I understand. <laughs> and and then he was filming. So I, I was peeping his equipment. I'm like, oh, too much Sony, but you know. Mm. Well, we'll go. We'll go. We'll go with it. Uh, I've always been a Canon, uh, from film to, to to DSLR to mirrorless. I've always been Canon. Is it because of the coloring? Yes. Yeah. You're like getting really good at this. I know. I'm impressed. I've talked to enough of you now, dude. You're starting to understand your people. You spent like two hours with videographers and photographers, and I think you get it now. It blows my mind. I like it. Yeah, other brands do have its purpose. Yeah. Fiji's more, you know, documentary. Gotcha. Fuji, Fiji. Mm-hmm. Tomatoes, tomatoes, whatever. Same thing. Yeah. Um, and everything else in between, uh, I don't know what it's for, but <laughs> I got gotcha. you. I think it just, I think it, I think they're table weights. Yeah. Table weights. Yeah. yeah. Paper weights. Paper, Paper weights. weights. Paper Paper weights. Table, table weights. Table yeah. weights. Table wow. weights is not. I mean, that's a thing for you. You have four cameras sitting around. Yeah, so. that's true. That's true. Table so weight. how did did you like go up and talk to him about no, his I, camera? I, or so how did that let, happen? Let me interject. Okay, I'll allow it this time. I a hundred percent do not remember anything. I just okay. remember. The, like, literally as far back as I remember is, like, Lori asking me, hey, can you take pictures of me for the muscle and fitness? Um, no, it was way before that. That's all I remember. That's it was as way far before, back. But he was so engulfed in his workouts, you know, and that communicated with a lot of people. Yeah. Good thing. Um, but then he was in, in, very engulfed in the workout in this film. So he was definitely in it. I'm like, yeah. respect. And I never actually asked him to see his footage is kind of weird just okay so you put it can i watch yourself? can i watch your hd 4k can video I, of you working out hitting that hitting that 225 binge like oof <laughs> yeah <laughs> you should have actually would have been really like funny. you're seeing it in person so like why watch the footage yeah because that's fair because that's what footage is for i guess it save it for later better. save it for later i guess can, can it's like he's like hey can can i see your can I see your footage? And he's just like recording my screen. It's pretty good, <laughs> <Yeah>. man. <laughs> but, uh, so, you know, that's how I, you know, as time went on, you know, we slowly inter- interacted and then um, actually we didn't really work. I don't think he even know I even shot until I showed up to your photo. Your photo your oh, video seriously? Shoot. Yeah. Is that true? What was the question? You didn't know that he shot until, at all until the what you want? Is that a true fact? Or did you know? Pretty sure I didn't. Oh. You just showed up. Dang. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, because um, I didn't even follow you on Instagram. No, I thought you were like a fitness coach. I am. You still are? Yes. Okay. Well, I just thought he was a fitness coach. I didn't know he was a photographer until gotcha. we went. I felt so bad that day because we asked the Schaefer's, which you know Leah's garage. That's where we yeah. shot. I was like, yeah, it's gonna be me, Daniel, and like Trinity, and like she rolls up, and like this whole posse comes, and like <laughs> I felt so bad. She opened the door, and I'm like, I'm really sorry. I thought it was going to be like three people. Yeah. But then Richard comes with like all well, the Schaefer's are so hospitable too. Yeah, but it didn't matter. I didn't know him like that back then. I was nervous. Why were you nervous? Because I also guy? 
only expect well yeah you are a little bit intimidating i don't know if you're aware <laughs> uh-huh. but it's like well, oh well, I, hello what'd you think of me the first time huh yeah what'd you think of Richard? i was time? so intimidated i was like well from what like for one, just you look a little intimidating. I don't know. Oh. If, again, yeah, I don't know if you're fully aware of that, but the uh, tattoos. I see myself the, every day. So. Yeah, yeah. It's a little scary at first. It's a little like, oh my gosh, don't murder me. Um, <laughs> but then also like I don't you roll no up more. with the camera, you're shooting stuff. Christian's, I'm comfortable with Christian, but you got Trin coming over and killing the makeup effects, you killing the photos and stuff. It's like, whoa, this got serious. This got real. Like I felt like I had to step up because there was so much professionalism going on. So I was like, shoot, I got I to gotta bring it now. It was it was stressful. I was stressed. Well, it was because like also when you have more people involved in the project, they also yeah. have like higher expectations for it. Yeah, true. So like if it just sucked, then everybody would be like, "Why did I just waste my Saturday?" Yep. To come and watch this guy flip around on the floor, <laughs> like a fish out of water. <laughs> so, so things with like when when you go onto a set, right? Yeah. And you've been in probably more sets than I have, but I've been to a lot of sets. Multicultural Indians. I've been in Indian video shoots. In them, photographer. Yeah, photography. Photographer them. Is that is that a term? It is, it is now. It is now. Photographer yeah. the video shoot. <laughs> 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 so I've been in, in a lot of like different scenes, and it doesn't look like much. Yeah, you know. So when I mean, a normal person shows up and like this is the set, like yeah, like it's what you see isn't what you get. Gotcha. And so, like, when I seen it, I was like, oh, yeah, I already see what you're going to do. And then when, when he did start flopping around on the floor, I was like, this guy's really intense. <laughs> and, you know, and I didn't know anything about you yeah. at all. And I'm still learning yep. a, a lot about you. But the short time I've been with you, I've learned a lot. And uh, you're definitely in, in it. You know, in when, it's, when it. it's time to shoot, it's time to shoot, you know. And so it's I serious. was trying to dodge a move from you and, like, when you're flipping around like oh okay i need to back up and then he's yeah. behind me with the video and then his his part's way more crucial than mine you know mm-hmm. so i'm trying to get out of his way and he's like oh no go ahead go ahead you know yeah you got some killer shots that day those are still some of my favorite photos that have been taken of me or some Dude, of your the pink shots cup was awesome crazy the pink yeah. cup <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there's some good ones in there yeah there's for Thank sure you, some I good ones. i don't think the internet's seen the pink cup yet I think I put it on Twitter. I don't think you did. Okay, I, I don't have Twitter. I wouldn't know. I think I put it on Twitter. I'm not positive. About I don't. That. I don't think people have seen the one of you and me trying to figure out the Roku either. The Roku, <laughs> the one where I look super disappointed yeah, like, in you. <laughs> <laughs> so good. I, I love shooting behind the scene. You, you catch a lot of cool things. Yeah, and, and it's cool for me too because I never like, especially when you took the uncaged ones. I never see what I look like. You know, I just yeah. like I just see like what everybody else sees in terms of like the screen and I don't see anything outside of that. Yeah. So when when you take behind the scenes photos or anybody takes them, it's very rare, number one. But like you, you see like how intense you actually like are into it, you know? Yeah. yeah. We yeah. have game faces. Oh, yeah. I didn't know we had. I, game know. Faces. I love watching you guys collaborate. You're definitely workable. Like you guys do have a connection. Yeah. Well, I think it's become more of like this. Especially now, but um, <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> like, like right now, we were editing the video. Like Daniel, yeah. Daniel was like, "We should try this," and I was, I'm like, it's, "That's not gonna work." Yeah, we need to try this. But at first, I was like, "Whatever." Like, you want this? I'll do this. But now, now I'm more of like, "Like that's not gonna work." And here's, yeah. here's why it's not gonna work. And we should try this. And we know we don't take it personal. It's yeah, like, yeah, if that, it's yeah. Not, if an idea sucks, we say it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like For sometimes sure. Daniel doesn't like something. Like those really fast cuts. I was like, "Those are great," and I come in and you're just like. Yeah. You went way too ham, dude. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. What are um some of your favorite shoots that you've been a part of or that you've gotten able to do? Been able to do is the grammatically that, correct that way sense. to say that. Yeah. What are some of your favorite opportunities you've had to shoot? Whether it's places or people or anything like that, specifically memorable. Cuz it sounds like you've got a well, lot I'm, I'm of so unique experiences on wide range. Cuz like th- Everybody says you need, you need to belong into a, a genre, niche. right? Yeah. A niche. I, Absolutely not. T- in today's market, the whole like you have to be, you have to have a niche. You have to have a niche. You have to belong to one subject. And this is going back to my childhood. I, I was always told I didn't belong to a group. You know, my mom actually was called to the counselor's office when I went to high school, my freshman year. And, and then they said, there's something wrong. Mm-hmm. You know, your son doesn't belong to a group. Hmm. 
because I was hanging out with the goths. I was hanging out with the punks. I was hanging out with the skaters. I was yeah. hanging out with the preps. I had a few jock friends. I, I, I was mingling with a lot of people. Yeah. And, and when you learn that, I call it a skill or a trait. Mm-hmm. When, when you learn to be diverse like that, um, you don't belong to a niche. Uh, I think it's because a lot of people don't want to feel uncomfortable. Yeah. They want to stay in their comfort zone. So they pick a niche and they stay in the one subject. Yeah. And when you do that, you don't have room for growth. 100%. That that's polarization. Yeah. And, and that's I think that's a very big problem today. Everyone wants to be polarized, they don't want to be challenged. Mm. And so when you say what type of photography do you like to do? To me it's like what what are you into at the moment maybe? Yeah. You know, what I shot yesterday is not what I'm going to be, be shooting tomorrow. Like I never thought I was going to be behind the scenes of Janet Sherman. Yeah. You yeah. know, did I ever think I was going to be behind scenes shooting videos uh, of video shoots? No, my, my end game is, you know, Africa. It is India. It is the Philippines. It is tribals. You know, that's my end goal. But am, yeah. I, am I only going for that? No, I'm no, you're only, not tied to it. Yeah. Uh, so what's my favorite shoot so far? I'd, I'd say um, the most interesting what yeah. has been your, your your shoot? You don't have to say that. No, 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 you're, you're not, not, not the second video <laughs> He's being shoot. Being honest, this, the, the, yeah. the first video shoot was the most interesting. Second one sucked. <laughs> second one, uh, no, it didn't. That it was suck. It, it's just, it was just it was it was predictable. Yeah, you're used to it. Yeah, the first one was unpredictable. Yeah, true. Yeah, I, I really did not expect. I had nothing. You know, the second one, it, it, it's like. The first movie that comes out, let's go with Hangover, right? Everybody knows yeah. Hangover. Yeah. Nobody knew what that was going to be about. Yeah. You go to Hangover 2, like, yeah, there's going to be a lot of new things, new new dynamics, but in the end, like, you already know what it's going to be kind yeah. of about. And that's what probably what it was. But, you're, you know, as far as that, that was... Yeah, um, that makes sense. Uh, besides that, you know, outside of this, you know, circle, uh, probably my... The Indian... The in, little Indian girls, I, I I shoot pictures of when they're in their in their in um, uh, their suits. I forget the Indian suit. I is that in like San Francisco or is that like a festival? Um, it was a wedding actually. Oh okay, oh. okay, nice. Yeah, um, I know which one you're talking. That's like, like everybody has their own. Everybody likes to do a certain thing. Um, but there's certain things that even I see, and I'm like, I couldn't do that. Like what you shoot is like documentary style. I couldn't do that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I respect it because like, it's cool. It's just, it's like, I don't know how to like capture that. I'm sure I could, but I get what you're saying with like, that's like, you, you've tried so many different things that it's hard to say. Even for me, like when people are like, so what, what kind of photos do you take? I'm like, I, I don't know how to answer that question. Yeah. Because it's like, it's such a loaded, like, I don't know. I've done fitness. I've done real estate. I've done music videos. Like, I don't really know how to answer that question. So I get it. Well, and we're, we're all about that. Mm-hmm. Like that's part of what inspired the podcast was the idea of trying to find people who are not fitting into any box or fitting into any boundaries and they're just chasing the creativity. And especially that's like, the whole like point. especially like here in this industry, like a lot of people say that to be successful. I've heard it too from like people that are successful in videography. They're like, oh, you can't be the jack of all trades, mm-hmm. which I, I get to a certain extent. Yes. But like you have to be like, from what I was told, like clients don't want to go to your website and be like, look and see photographer videographer director behind the scene for like they don't want to see that they want to just see like photographer yeah, yeah. so yeah. go you know, like my website i don't know if you you've seen it i oh, know yeah. you've seen part of it mm-hmm. but i do have a lot of drop downs but if you go to digital gallery uh yeah digital gallery yeah. if you do the drop down like you'll see so many different categories yep. and, and which you, by you, the way you, when i like have time on my hands a lot of the times I end up going and flipping through your stuff because it's so cool. Yeah. That's a true yeah. story. I've done that several times. Just and had to say and that. You, you'll see my strengths. You'll see my weaknesses. Mm. And, and it, Same with mine. Yep. And then if you don't like the, my weaknesses, then you'll, you'll find somebody else. It's fine. You yeah. Know? But I'm not going to put myself in a category for you. Yeah, for well, sure. Because it makes you feel uncomfortable. Yeah. I'm, you do I'm, what you want to do. I'm going to challenge you. It's yeah. fine. That's awesome. Can you do one favor? Can you hit record on that? Yeah. So, Richard, tell the story about... Uh, that picture you took of the San Francisco Bridge. Uh, my famous one. Your famous one. My famous. Have one. you seen that photo? The photo of of the bridge that he took. I don't think I'd know what you're talking about. Maybe I do. 
So took a detour under the Golden Gate Bridge. Okay. That one. Super illegal. Yeah. Yeah. The ten thousand dollar <laughs> fine one. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> so apparently there, there's a uh, night watchers at uh, Golden Gate Bridge. Okay. That sit there in the dark and their telescopes and black uh black like light. all blacked out with yeah. like night vision night goggles. Vision goggles. Yeah. yeah. Just making sure no one goes down there or what? Mm -hmm. Ever since nine eleven. Oh. True story. This is not even like. Yeah. A, a hangover thing. This yeah. is like, yeah. <laughs> thank you, Saddam uh, bin Laden. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, this is like a true story. So yeah. ever since nine eleven, um, San Francisco has been a uh, Golden Gate Bridge has been an off limit uh, place to go under. Whoa, I didn't know that. That's super. interesting. So there's that red red brick uh, cannon house. I okay. oh, the proper uh, name. Fort. Yeah. I don't know if the tours point? are back open. Four, four point. point. Yeah. Okay. But it's, not, go, it's not. It's not. Okay. No. So it's all been gated off. It has, you know, a $10,000 fine, felony offense. Ooh. And it's gated. And it, you have to crawl. Well, I crawled across. Yeah. Around over the ocean. Like like Ninja Turtle. If you, if you go to Fort Point, you could see the spot probably where you crawled around. Because it's like Fort Point And you can like shimmy around this like cement little layer, right? That like. It's a pole that holds the bridge up. You yeah. can like shimmy around it and like get under the bridge, but it's gated. Whoa. Go on. So shimmying around it late yeah. at night, setting the camera up as I'm you know, getting ready to do the shutter drag and my settings all set up. It's like, wow, man. Like, yeah. Not it's a lot of people really see that. big. Yeah. You know? yeah. So I take a few shots, switch out disc, take a few more shots, looking around just like, wow, you know? Yeah. Get on the ground. Oh no! Dude rolls up on me, comes up behind me. You know the whole sit on the ground, cross your legs, cross yep. your hands. Yeah, got caught. No way. So then I have to go through my equipment. Takes the disc. I still have one disc. Yeah, in no trouble. way. Yeah. Come to find out, week prior, this was a what Saturday night maybe. For, yeah, Saturday night. Okay. One week prior, a famous photographer. Don't know his name. World famous, got caught in the same spot. Whoa, jeez. Yeah. So did you get that fine? Did you get that? Part, I had to go to court. I got part of it. Oh. Was it worth Ouch. it? Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. I mean, regardless, it's a great story. Though. Yeah, you know, I mean, story so alone if you want to buy that it. shot, I definitely have it on my website, up for sale under the gallery store. There so, you go. Yeah. Hey, there you I'll go. pay yeah. for the sliding fine. in. Yep. <laughs> yep. So wow, yeah. that's yeah. crazy. I, I had no idea that you're not allowed to do that. Yeah, hell no. You're not allowed to do that. It's stupid, though. I get it. Like, I mean, especially, like, being in, like, that field of law enforcement. Yeah. I wouldn't know how to react if you're trained that if somebody goes under that bridge, like, they're, they could be terrorists. Well, you have to understand, too, what do photographers carry? A duffel bag. A uh, bag. Yeah, what else are you going to yeah. see? Like, you just see a duffel bag blacked out. Like, Yeah. Dang. What does it say? That's crazy to think about. Yeah. Oh shoot! Yeah, so if you if you walk around, are you this, gonna show this picture to the? Yeah, I'll probably okay. upload it. Throw it in. If you like walk around that way, because right, if we're standing looking at the gate, yeah, it, behind me is the fort. Oh, because that's the first. That's side. the first one. I went to the the second one goes over the ocean. Yeah, so if you walk over this way, it goes over the. Oops, if you walk over this way, my Tinder. If you walk over this way, it <laughs> goes around the bridge. There's like. A cement block that you could walk around and you can go on that side. Yeah. Yeah. I took a picture and I was going to send it to you, but I forgot because you started asking me about if I was in San Francisco and I was like, yeah, I was here. And then I showed you that photo I took. I got inspiration from you. I hate landscape. I hate it. Really? It's just not my thing. I mean, I don't hate it. Like if somebody else does it, then cool. But like, I, I can't, I don't understand it. Like when a subject is just there, like a statue or like a building, I can't pose them. I can't like, do different things with like shaping light so it's, for me it's like it's hard but like that that day that i shot that photo it was like perfect timing. perfect timing yeah i didn't have a tripod again going back to like just see a lot a lot of photographers that sun goes down they stop mm -hmm. and that's when i go out uh, i've always been wow. a night guy and i love night photography and, and learning you definitely have to know your camera settings and what works what doesn't work counterweights yeah. and for because yeah, you're doing shutter dragging, you know, light. I love light trails. Light trails. So what? What is that shutter dragging? You said. 
Yeah. So for people who don't know, what is it? Is that the shot? Mm -hmm. That's incredible. No, that's mine. Oh, that's, that's yours? Shot. Yeah. That's really cool too, though. Well, like I'll show you what, sh what shutter drag is. So. I want to see the shot. I'll, I'll look for it on Richard's yeah, website. You so that's so shot. if you have your shutter, so shutter speed goes like this, right? You can have it fast, and it'll like it's like when I hold it down and it goes. It's yeah. like, oh okay. So he's probably at it like one thousand. Yeah, right here I'm really fast. So that's why you can see every little crease in the wave. Yeah, because like that shutter is so fast it caught it. Yeah, but if you slow down your shutter, it's gonna make it look milky. Yeah, you, you could look at. Oh damage. okay, I see. Look at that warmth, like. You see how the water looks now. Oh, yeah. it's all like like soft and yeah. it looks like mist. Yeah. Yeah. And gotcha. you can see that I didn't use a tripod. You're supposed to use a tripod because when you touch it. You should have it, a timer. Exactly. The shutter stays open and yeah. it slowly closes. So if you don't have a tripod and you move even a little bit, it's going to be blurry. So I just like, I like prop my phone on a pole and I put my wallet on top of it in a rock and just put my camera on top of it and hit it and rock, was like walked away. Got it. Yeah. I will find cool. a shot. Keep talking. What the hell, man? What? I said, I said, I will find the shot. <laughs> oh, <talking. laughs> oh, that's what you said. No, 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 no. Gotcha. So we were, we were talking a little bit earlier about like movies and how it's hard to not see the lighting in movies. Are there any movies specifically that like the lighting or the certain shots like the blow your mind? Is underground it in your art six. gallery? Yeah, underground. That's six. the one with Ryan Reynolds. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That has been like one of the best movies lately. That has. The way they edit, it, the way they shoot, and the colors, the warmth, like yeah, the crisp, the crystal, uh, uh, what are they called? Um, the light flares, the light okay. flares yeah. are just amazing. They use in that, and yeah, it, it, it's definitely ruined me. <laughs> it's definitely ruined me. <laughs> it is that movie is pretty. If you haven't seen that movie, go watch that movie. It's pretty what incredible. Movie is it? Six Underground. It's got Ryan Reynolds. It's got ah, oh, there's a ton of people in that movie. Who else is in that movie? I've never heard of it. I can't remember. you never heard of it? That one? Yeah, that's the one. Whoa. Wait, can you zoom in on that? So if you look closely, you can actually see the pillar. I made it to where it looks like you're a part, like you're actually standing there. That's the whole idea behind the image. Oh, was, you're behind yeah, the barricade. Right behind it. So right, right on the other side is the ocean. It was So high tide, it would be flooding over. Mm -hmm. It was just gotcha. about to be starting to get, uh, to get high tide. Wow. Yeah, that's a pretty incredible shot. Well, it's things like that that like that's what makes um like ar architecture architecture I can't speak today. Architecture and uh landscape so hard is cuz like you can't move your subject, you can't like do a lot of things with them. Everything is perspective and yeah. shooting something in different ways that somebody hasn't shot it before, which is what he did. Followed by a $10,000 fine. Yeah. Yeah. Worth it. Mhm. Mm so, it's been fun. I thought about it. So what's your strong point? I don't think I have one. You don't have one? I don't know. I don't know. Like, if I could just go in there cold and shoot something really good, like, undoubtedly, like, fitness. Fitness. For sure. I could just go in there cold, like, not know the person, not, like, know what kind of vibes they're going for, and, like, I'll get something they like. For sure. But um, I was telling this to... Was it Izzy? Jenny? Jenny. Like, my favorite, what I want to get into is more, like more concerts and music stuff okay that's what i want my end all be all to be i will do everything else but like i would say still to this day like some of my favorite stuff is like so there's some things i like to maybe work with you on because i'm more documentary style i, I don't like strobes it's not my thing yeah. i like to do light setup when necessary mm -hmm. but i don't like messing with the extra equipment it, it just it Adds too much fakery. It's not mm -hmm. fake, but it's, yeah, it's also subjective. No, once once you see it, like once you know about lights, and then you look at a magazine, you're see them. You could see everything. Yep. Like it's just like a light. You will never see a person like that, like walking around in normal life. Yep. Yeah, yeah. You were saying, and sure. so documentary is definitely my thing. But you know, you with strobes is definitely um, your your thing. Like you know it a lot more than I do. I I feel with lights. Yes. Um. There is a shot style I've definitely been wanting to do. It's a concert base. You're always at concerts. Yeah. So when they do it, uh, it's not called negative. Basically, it's a silhouette. Basically, he has a strobe behind. Oh, uh, behind the person. Backlighting. Yeah, completely backlit silhouette. And yeah. but it was a concert. I think it was the the video was called. It was from Coldplay. Um, Clocks. Okay, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, uh, the, 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 I love that video. Mm -hmm. 
and some of the shots it was obviously it wasn't photography but it was video based but i want to do a photography style where it's just all those lights streaming out at me with let's say if you're the subject yeah and you're just completely blacked out by like the silhouette of you that'd be cool uh, that's some of the shots i've been wanting to get into Mm -hmm. yeah but that's all strobe based And, and if you don't have it have it right you'll have just a blurry blob of black and yeah light shooting out everywhere so mm-hmm. and the hard part about that is like shooting concerts is so hard and easy because you don't have control of the lighting and that's like my biggest thing is like having that's why i have lights because i'm like like i need to have control of that and like where it goes like right now we were like could i lift it right there and like blowing out your head and you only see your eyeballs yes i could have probably done that but like a lot of it is just moving it around until you get it like it's just shaping light and that's what cinematography is it's just shaping light that's what you're doing but in in concerts Mm -hmm. most of it is hard light which makes it really hard and you can't control like you know sometimes it flickers or it changes colors or like you'll get a beam that goes over somebody and you can't control that that makes it hard the easy part is um like they're doing something they like like playing music so it's really easy to like just capture what they're doing you know but if they suck they suck like you can see that on camera yeah Yeah. true very true Mm -hmm. Hmm. awkward pause Awkward pause. So what about you? I don't take pictures. <laughs> no, but you, you but definitely work on that camera over there. I was trying. I'm learning. I'm learning. Christians, I've learned a lot from observing Christian. And then with uh, another guy I worked with for a while, Daniel Herrera, learned a lot from him. Learned a lot from, from watching you. Learned a lot from just observing things, asking questions. Even today, I uh, after the episode we filmed earlier, I was like, so I have an idea you're not going to like. And you didn't like the idea. Oh, yeah. Where I, for the first time, I wanted to be there the whole editing process of a music video. Just to see what what are you doing? How are you doing it? So how long did it take before you got bored? Uh, boredom? <laughs> I wouldn't say I got bored. But my head hurt so fast staring that closely at a screen. And especially what we're doing was a lot of, there's a lot of clips at the beginning of this video that have to sync really specifically. Like a lot of really small clips that have to sync exact and then you start missing a lot because you stare too long oh it's yeah exactly it's brutal you yeah. know it's interesting like staring at a because i've stared at a screen for a long time um doing music like you're in the yeah, studio I've, I've you're staring at screen. yeah you know it's it's rough but there's times where you're staring at the screen you get it to line up and then you close your eyes you can't do that when you're editing a video you can't go let me see if this is good and like get a break from it, you know? Yeah. So it's it's very different when you're sat there staring at the screen, scrutinizing every detail. It's like all oh, your and then like your so eyes fast. will like lie to you. You you know you know this right? Like you edit long enough, and like your eyes just like you're not like when we were filming. Like as, as an example, when we were editing voices, not yeah. filming, I couldn't hear it anymore. Yeah. Like the only reason I could help was because I knew the song well enough. Yeah. Like there's yeah. like three lanes of song. Like he's saying three different lines, and they're going like this. It's a super. They're like interweaving yeah. with each other. And after a while of looking at it, like I couldn't hear it anymore. Yeah. Which like, happens with your ears musically so mm-hmm. often. Like if we're even there's one guy I used to record in the studio with. And if we hit the end of the day, he'd be like, we got to wrap up because I'm not going to be able to hear when you need to do another take. Like it's just not going to happen. You got to get out. Yeah. So it's so true. You get that fatigue mm-hmm. after a while. A lot of people don't understand the refresh because they're not listening it or seeing it through your eyes or your ears. Yeah. And, Oh, I'm still fresh. Like, I, oh, I know you are. Yeah. But I, I'm not. And yeah. It looks like I'm not, but I, you really are. Well, and we were even talking earlier about you see when you're in a project, it takes forever to step away and not see, oh, there's my color grade. There's my, you know, mm-hmm. you see all that stuff. And with music, like I can hear reverb. I can hear all the things I've added. Like you got to sometimes if you can, if you have time to, if you're not on a time crunch, step back. And just look back at it again before you jump back in. It's hard, though. That's why a lot of the times that we've shot videos, like, I don't look at them again for, like, three months. Yeah. Because most of the time, I just, like, crank it in one night. Like, I just, like, do it in one night, and then, like, I don't want to... I can't look at it anymore. Yeah. Because, like, that's all I see. I see, like, I see all the cuts, and I see all the color grading mistakes, and I see, like, like lighting mistakes and things I could have done better, and, like, you just don't want to look at it anymore. But then after like three months, you look at it and you're like, oh, that was pretty good. And you like post it on Instagram. Which me and Gio started doing with music. We started doing, we'd, we'd, you know, record a song, get like a solid rough draft. And it's like, all right, won't touch that for three months. Like exactly what you said, but Mm -hmm. musically. Because it helps so much with, you hear all the flaws that you need to hear better, but you're also not overthinking the stuff that's actually good. And then sometimes when you have to pull, like, like you'll edit a lot of photos and sometimes you just want to like get it done. 
and like you'll edit 10 and you're like, oh my God, these look great. But you have like 100 and you'll just sit there and like just crank it out just to be done with it. Right. And by the time you're done, you'll like look at the first one and you look at the last one and the first one looks like to your eyes, it looks like it's not enough saturation, not enough contrast. Yeah. And then you get to the end and you're like, oh, that looks good. And then you like you go for a walk and come back and you're like, Ugh. like they're just like, <laughs> it looks so bad. We were yeah. going back and forth uh, that on one of your edits or photo shoots that you did. You sent it to me. He says, yeah, man, like the struggle is real on it. Like it really is. Um, Which one was it? It was the uh, one you, the white, the all white background, like you used the studio. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. In Tampa. Tampa, that yeah, was the one, yeah. yeah. So when you send me that one, I'm like, dude, you're like, thank God, man, because like, I, I couldn't oh see gosh. it no more. Yeah. Bro, that's what it feels like. Can you check that real quick for me, please? Yeah. I'll give you a cookie. But, huh? Yeah, you get a cookie. Um, What was I saying? Tampa. Oh, yeah. So that whole day, I was just shooting headshots for like four hours. And it was fine, because it's easy. You just... You set the camera one time, the lighting never changes because it's on a studio white backdrop. Temperature never changes because it's lit by artificial lights. Yes. But like I sat there and tried to crank through all of them and like I did the same thing. I would edit the first one and then I would just paste it and then paste it and then paste it and then paste it. And then like by the time you get to the end, you're like, oh, okay. And then you like you'll go to export it and you'll go to the very first one and you're like, oh, this needs way more. And then you'll go back and like add way more and then you like you'll like saturate it and like send it. And then sometimes you'll come back the next day and be like, that was way too much. But like the client doesn't know. Later, they, they like think it looks good. But in your eyes, yep. you're like, whoo, that's what it feels like. So I was going back and forth with him about that. Clients don't get their photos, the contracts for 14, 15 days. And like, they're always trying to get like, oh, is it almost done? Is it almost done? Yeah. Yeah, it was actually done the next day. But I don't know. If you got to like, done, you got to yeah. give it time to yeah. like sit. I, and I like, step away from it because like I'm so engulfed and I'm so tired. Of it, like I've looked. Yeah, it was up. that one. That's crucial. It was a beautiful picture. Yeah, and to me now it looks good, but like I edited like ten of these, and I was like, some looked like way too warm, some looked like way too blue, some the skin looked like orange. And that's another thing is the coloring. Like you start oversaturating the coloring, and if you're trying to do a color match to their outfit, yeah. in my case, you know the Indian outfits. Yeah. I I need a piece of the clothing because because you start going yeah. way too far off and color. And Canon's already really good. It actually makes real life look a little bit boring. Yeah. Because it pulls out the, the color so well. So then I need a piece of clothing to match up. I'm like, all right, it's too far off. Like, gotcha. it, they're, they're going, like especially with car photography. Yeah, you could, you could change the Ooh. hue. You get into car yeah. photography, you deliver those photos, they print them, they or big, massive 30 by 40 image, and then put it next to their car in the garage. Yeah. Well, oh, that looks. Yeah. That doesn't. Never even thought of that. And then huh. now, now you just ruined like any any jobs coming from that. Wow! And, and so taking a, an actual picture from your, with your phone and make sure that matches you know, with the car or whatever you got to do. But yeah, if you start images for too long, you start overdoing things. Yeah, mm -hmm. and just like with music, like how you said that you did on Cajun, like you listen back to it and you're like, oh, like five more decibels here. No, maybe that's too much. Two more decibels here. Like yeah. a little bit of reverb there. Oh, that's too much. We'd never hear that. No, yeah. I would never. No, hear for it. sure. But even if he for did sure. overdo the dress or like oversaturate it, the, the client probably won't be able to tell, right? He probably won't no. go to the, But it's going to bug you to know that you didn't get accurate. Yeah. 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 Super true. I think it's probably any art, right? At a certain point. I only learned it because hanging out with you, that yeah. you do it too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially, oh, when you're deep in a project like Uncaged, that was the worst for that one. Other projects we'd done. We did a couple hip hop records where it was like, let's see what we can do in two weeks. Like how many songs can we crank out? And so there wasn't that longevity yeah. to it. Uncaged, these are songs that I'd been working on for a year and a half. And so there was that, you know, I'd do something, we'd come back to it and it was like, oh, that's horrible. We, <laughs> we need to redo that again. It got brutal to where once the record was finally distributed, I couldn't listen to it and enjoy it for a month because my head was still in that year and a half long process of all the tweaking and it stuff. Together. It's brutal. It's brutal, but I think that's like the blessing and curse of being a creative too. Like you need to an extent, you need to be able to dive into something like that. Like you need to be able to get so deep in a project that you can see the layers and know what needs tweaking. But there's also the curse of it is that it's so hard to like even other people's music now. It's hard to like, 
I listen to it and I'm like, oh, the reverb. He went too hard in the reverb. Damn, Bring that I, down I'm decibel. not even at that level. So yeah. I have a question for both of you then. Yeah. How do I word it? So I, I'm a big person that... Yes, you are a big person. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> but uh, I, I try not to go... Actually, I don't go into my archives and re-edit. Something I just don't do. It, if yeah. It's, Unless it's one in a million like chances of like I can never get that shot again, yeah. then then I'll do what I gotta do. But as you learn, you learn new techniques, new skills, software gets better, whatever it is. But I don't go in my archives and re edit. Mm -hmm. If I need to, I'm like, I really wanna re edit, I'll go back to the same it's never gonna be the same, but I'll go back to the area and I'll try it same time of the year yeah. or whatever it is to get something of the same image. Obviously it's always different. Do you ever re edit old old Imagery? No. No. Do you ever? I totally do. Do you ever want to go? Imagery? 100% with music. That was going to ask before I, your style. Yeah, yeah, I totally do. Well, I'll tell you why I don't. Because once I learned about lighting, that changed everything for me. So I'll go back in my old projects and it, most of it was not lit well. Or it was lit like by whatever like the gym lighting has. So like I can't do a lot with it. But no, I've never. So you, you know, you, Jim, you probably could have done like umbrella and reflector type mm -hmm. of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to shape it, but because it's like it is that way, like I can't reshape the light because yeah. it's in there now. But sometimes I go in there and like work colors again, but like I'll never. I've probably done it like once, but like one photo, like never a video though, because I don't want to. I don't even want to like dissect the color. Like I, I feel like I'm just too critical about it. That it would just like feel like I kick myself in the butt to go back and try to recolor something and then be like, oh, this actually sucks. Yeah. You know? There's times and it's oh my gosh. Dude, you've been committing so many crimes today. This is like this this is every guy, podcast. This guy with every $10, podcast today fine. that's happening. Right. It's only been um, twice. There's right now I'm in the process of looking back. I haven't even said this publicly. This is a true fact. You're welcome for spoiling this a little bit. Um I'm working on a record that won't come out for a while, but where I'm going to take old songs of mine and completely redo them because I hate, like, I see wasted potential in the fact that I didn't know what I was doing yet. Now I know, and I know those songs could have been so much better. Like, I need it for me to actualize the potential and what I should have done but couldn't do at the time. Daniel Sherman remix of Daniel Sherman. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, and even on even on my my last record, there was the first three songs. Yeah. On Uncaged? I had released the first three songs. One of them a year ago, one of them nine months ago, one of them just like three months before, four months before. And I went in and by the time we'd finished the record, the rest of the record, I was like, they don't live up. We got to hit them again. And so gave the first song that was a year old, like completely top to bottom redo, gave the second one like a 50-50 type thing. And the third one just touched it up. But so I how'd like your, how'd your audience feel? I have no that? idea. That's a great question. I, I don't think, think they could tell. The reception on Inside was very different. That was because you did a completely different Top verse, to bottom, redid it. And you did the intro different. And I thought, I think it was good. I people like might it. lie to me though sometimes though i never I like know if i can trust people when they say they like something but um yeah, that, that is the, the only thing i me heard too. a I lot know. of people said it was a little fuller they said they could just tell there was new depth to it you know so maybe they didn't i think especially bullet from umbrella most people didn't notice the one that was a three month difference and the one that was six month difference maybe they felt it has a little more punch mm -hmm. but the one that was a year difference vast vast improvement it's like when you like you don't know that much about cameras but like you instantly like notice a jump between that one and that one and you said something similar yeah that it just looks like like there's more depth but you right? know here's another example to like music related example taylor swift right now re-recording all of her old albums and releasing them top to bottom every sound is completely re-recorded so are you re-recording then or are you just remix not remixing but like remastering it's what I'm doing is not quite what Taylor Swift is doing. There's things I want to tweak in terms of, you know, what that sound sounds like, maybe even a lyric, maybe even, you know, I'm going to go and treat it like a new song, but with the heart and energy mm -hmm. of the old song. The same a skeleton. Bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, because I've, I've, I haven't only learned better production, but I've also learned better structure. I've mm -hmm. learned better, and that's all part of it. Taylor Swift, she's literally going, taking the old songs and just redoing them with better mixing. Mm. And... 
I can't tell 99% of the time. And that's like my thing. So I don't know. I don't know if sometimes maybe it's not worth it. You know, sometimes maybe it's more of a me thing. Like I need to go back. Well, it helps out closure. your future. Yeah. In a way. Yeah. Your future music that you haven't created yet. True. I don't know. There's, there's something about like when I, I don't do it personally also because like part of that is like, it's like a moment in time, and, and I, like I want to yeah. remember it for like the way it was. Yeah, I don't want to go back. You want to keep like, the closure. You don't yeah, want to reopen I, it. Exactly. I don't want to yeah. reopen it. It's like it's like when they uh, remastered Star Wars. Remember that? Remember how bad that was? Yeah. Well, they, they changed the stuff. CGI. They changed stuff. That's what I would do. Han shot first. We're not going to get into that. <laughs> but like with with, with Jabba the Hutt and having like Han Solo walk over him and yeah. like he like glitched. It was bad. It it's was like real bad. that. I don't want to like go there's, back in and make it. There's worse. times you kill the magic. Mm -hmm. For sure. And that definitely, I am nervous that when I go back and redo, because I'm basically going back and looking at what are people's favorite songs from so, some of these records. I, with every photo, I, I can remember every album. Yeah. In my archives, you show me a photo, not the date, but I will remember at least at least a story yeah. of that whole photo. So every time I come back, I at least got a thousand pictures. Okay. Which is bad in the sense of old way of shooting. Because you're supposed to always break down and really foresee what you're trying to shoot and get, you know, capture and all that. Yeah. Well, then you're not, you're really, to me, you're not utilizing to today's technology. Like, oh, well, how about you just shoot, you know, what you feel is and keep getting at different angles and all that. So I, I shoot at least a thousand. Yeah. Okay. And I come back and I can re-edit and all that. But I could identify every album and I yeah. remember every story, all my archives. Yeah. Even though I did have a crash recently. Oh no. Your hard yeah. drive crashed? Yeah. Oh, another story. No. But anyway, Bro, but I, I did have me. I've heard so many stories about like people losing hard drives. But my very first uh photo shoot. Yeah. And I thought I was killing it, right? It it <laughs> was it was a friend of mine. She was doing henna. It was a henna party for the um, Afghani culture. Okay. Uh, it was just all the females. So I got invited. I get to do the um, the photo shoot for it, right? Yeah. And I, I was killing it. Uh huh. Doing it right. I, I, recent times, I you know I had to get go, go back into the archives and rebuild uh, websites, and I was trying to pull out some old imagery. Yeah. And I still use my old images, even though I know they're broken and they're not correct, yeah. but. To me, that it's fine. Like it meant something to me. Yeah. And if you don't like it, you know, I mean, and you're not willing to take the time to learn, then you know, you're, you're lost. Yeah, for sure. And I went to go use those photos. Uh huh. Yeah, they look like Oompa Loompa oh, colors. No. Like the Orange. the color was just that was before I really knew much about editing. You yeah. Know? So are you are you thinking about going and re-editing? I no. no. No, you won't do it. There's no. something about it. Like you just even if it's bad, you're like, see, I've always been bad with closure period anyway i always like what's the first question i ask after a show what's your second favorite cereal no what's the first question i what ask can after i do a better show? what could i do better yeah and then i'll do it better next time but i'll always always there's shows i still have in my mind i don't remember the good stuff as much as i should because i'm so focused on what i should have done mm -hmm. and so i think for me it's just a personality thing too i need to if i can fix it like i i should fix it mm -hmm. is my mentality yeah, but like what he was saying though, if the light lighting isn't correct, you can't fix yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Unless you start breaking the images, there's stuff you can't do. Yeah, and that that's a lot with it. And posing. Yeah, you it, can't do anything with that. Once it's posed like that, it's like yeah, posing was wrong. Uh, color was definitely off. Uh, and then once you start cropping, I mean, and there's. People that say don't you should never crop. There's people that say yeah, that's what the whole purpose is. I don't know. I, I'm if if you have to overcrop. Yeah. Can you check that? I think it died. The battery. Yeah. Do we pause? Nope. Pause. No, we just keep going. All right. Yeah. Can you hit record again? Dude, I've just been like horrified. I know. I, I can't tell you how many been times. Like ten minutes every time. You've been traumatized, bro. Yes. Yeah, he is. I can't tell Wait, you how many. He times. had to edit a podcast where the entire podcast, one of our cameras wasn't on because of it. And I think he's he's a little on edge. Can we get that. a checklist? A whiteboard checklist going? Well, I, what I want <laughs> is like a stupid screen that flips and it shows you know? me. This one, I could just attach it's a screen to it, but I trust it because it has a light. It's got the red light. Telling me that it, but this one, I could, I could see. Anyway, Izzy is like that too, where like 
how you, going back to your point about how you were saying like what's the point of digital if you're not going to like take a crap load of them i don't shoot like that because i don't like i don't like to shoot like that some people do that's fine but izzy is like that too but with, but with video the other videographer that was here she she shoots like that she will like she did like this edit of like a car interior that like like had stars mm -hmm. it's a car interior. oh i saw that one yeah yeah you, so that, yeah, that video right video. you know how much footage she has of stars in the car like a bazillion 20 more. minutes whoa and even when we did the wedding like i was like just like let's check how many clips you have and there was like 300 and something clips whoa but there's ways to do it yeah it's everybody has their own method it's like how you were saying like uh, people saying it well if you shoot digital like why not just take a lot of them yeah yeah but some people or, are, or cropping or crop it exactly the yeah, same thing people cropping. are like well why would you crop it if you didn't take it that perfect in camera and it's like well that, that's why there's editing right yeah. yeah and then going back to the first uh a lot of people ask me like how do you I don't, i'm not saying i'm good but like people ask me like how do you get better at taking photos or video you just do it like yeah. do it with no you're not just do it you have to do it with intent that's yeah it. yeah mm -hmm. if you if you continuously just blast it, it's like with anything in life with anything if you just keep doing it without intention of trying to get better or dig deeper and you just keep going wider like you're not gonna get any better yeah yeah there's um the first like photo shoot i've ever did the internet has never seen it it was that bad like i've tried to like go back and like show me no it's <laughs> terrible there's like a picture of like i don't even yeah. want to talk about it i don't even want to talk about it for your thing uh your your podcast i'll send you an image of my that one i'm talking about my very first yeah. digital Dude, I'm I'm embarrassed. Uba, Uba. I won't even send you one of mine. I'm embarrassed about I it. I feel the same way about my career. You cannot find Did you feel like you were killing it? Demo yeah, GP. I feel like I was killing it, dude. I was like, dude, oh, yeah. these are great. And then like, I just never uploaded them because it was before like my Instagram was like my business. So I just never posted them on Instagram. And then like, once I started doing it as like a business, I was like, oh, I have like these hundreds of photos that I took from like two years ago. Really similar to what you were saying. Yeah. And yeah it very was, similar like, situation. Nobody's ever, nobody has ever seen them. Nobody will ever see them. Actually, there's one person that's seen them. Ruben, you got to show me now. No, you can't tell me you. that and not show I'm me. I'm pretty sure I deleted all of them. Oh my god! But gosh. he was with me because, like, we took my camera and we just went to San Jose and just like trying to take some like photos and like even I remember him looking at it and being like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, "Yeah, dude, that's cool." Yeah, it was just like it was not it. Yeah, daytime cool. I could do that. With, see, nighttime I could kill it every time. And I'm the opposite. I freaking he gets stressed. Hate. Shooting I just Dude, sent him night a photography storyboard. is the reflections, the lighting, the the. You do a lot of in, in like the city, like a lot of street photography yeah. at night. That's so hard because people are moving. It you looks have great a too. Shutter. Yeah, can't, I can't do that. But day daytime, I'm I'm lost sometimes. Like I really don't. Huh. Uh, I'll shoot a thousand. I always just use a thousand. Usually, it's give or take. But daytime, I'll come back without intent shooting. I'll probably capture like 40, like decent, wow. okay photos, but nothing really I could post on my digital, you know, portfolio to sell. Yeah. You know, it's just like cool for me, cool memory. I'll, I'll yeah. wrap it up and I'll keep it in my archive and yeah. throw it in my Google photos and I can look back on it, but it's not going to touch my website. Huh. But nighttime phot photography, I, like, I'm guaranteed I'm coming back with some money. Damn. I got to take some tips from you. We, yeah. need, we actually need to do an evening to a night shoot. Bro, I just, I don't know what it is, man. It's just he, stressing. Like, we'll do I, evening, I, I, like, for, for you and me, for you to teach me some cool stuff, and yeah. then I'll, I'll teach you some cool stuff. I literally that. sent him a storyboard, what, a week ago? And I get, two weeks ago? Yeah. And I get back a text that he thought I was joking when I put that it needs to be shot at night on there, because he hates that. And I was like, no, I'm actually serious. Freak them out. I don't Freak know. Water, out. man, water. So, like, one of my night shoots... Um, I, I actually was supposed to go to Sacramento. I forgot what I was supposed to shoot. It was down by the water. It was like some the, the gold bridge. I think I was supposed to go shoot. I kind of had a little itinerary. You know, always have something different every time. I never yeah. hit full. You know, accomplished the whole itinerary. But I slept. I took a nap and I slept in my alarm. And I woke up oh. like at one p one a.m. and I was like, "Fuck! I missed my shots, man." Yeah. And I was like, "Well, shoot, like." I'm already kind of awake now. Like, yeah. So I drove out to Frisco. Instead, I drove out to Frisco, got out there about like just at right before three o'clock. And perfect timing. The street, street uh, cleaner just, just washed the streets. Oh, there you go. Catch Full reflection. Yeah. Like, and water is like your, your money right there when it comes to night photography or night videoing. Yeah. For videoing, you don't need a lot of water, but 
it was perfect. So I got it gives a texture. Everything is like has beautiful. more beautiful. Oh yeah. my god, it's just it was wet. Like yeah. it, and I, so I got the sky. It was perfect blue sky. The sky was just dark royal blue, cobalt blue, I should say. Mm-hmm. And then um, the clouds looked blackish, and I got the bridge lit up. It, it was a dope go. picture. Wow. And, and just like the wet, you know, mm-hmm. just water and a whole lot of lighting, which you're good at. So, I mean, the thing is with lights, like you can't bring them. Why? Well, not to a video shoot. Not, not with like our budget. Like we can't have a generator. We've got generators. Oh, yeah. I, I have. Um, you have a strobe? Yeah, I have a strobe that runs probably about three hours on it, on the battery. Really? Yeah. Like I, I've used that tube light. Where, where, where I have go? I have a lot of hand lights. I can go with you guys. I might be able to help because let's yeah, go to Frisco. I'm stressing about that. Where are you, yeah. well, you shooting it at? Oh, it was for the video you were going to be at. Oh, we asked yeah. You to be at. Where's that going to be at? No idea. Uh, Some place at locations. night. There's a few, <laughs> according to Daniel. So uh, I went on skating. Um, I met up with a group of skaters in Frisco. We did that 11 mile skate from nine to midnight. It was dope. Ooh, that does sound cool. Um, oh, you should bring your board to go do it with me. I'm they, down. They do board skates, anything with wheels, like they don't care. But they have uh, some cool um, parking garages that we they, I, I found over oh, there. Oh, okay. Top like top floor, like you yeah. see all the lights, the moons. Huh. It'd be kind of cool. That'd I don't know cool. what you're trying to go for. Yeah, I don't know if that would work for this one, but for a future one. It's hard because I can't say because there's cameras on me. But <laughs> yeah, true. there's there's definitely projects that could work for. Yeah. What you say will be used huh? against you in court of law. Yeah, seriously. With these people, <laughs> they're always they're always <laughs> waiting for me to slip up. They're excited. They'll dig. Sometimes there's like so. One thing I've always said to people. I don't know if I've said it to you. I don't think I have, but I've said to certain people that like Daniel has fans, and I've seen them in the chats, like in doc in not documentaries, like fuck comments yes. in the comment section <laughs> yeah. in the documentaries um and like but once i saw them in person that's when my mind was like Pfft. and they are they like legit like will go crazy they, not, not yeah. in terms of like oh my god but like they i i was saying fan lore. a google doc with hundreds of words of analysis on what i've said and done to try and predict my future projects was it like, who I they go it they go hard yeah well yeah. it was it was actually pretty cool uh, going back to his part of me to cut you yeah. off um behind the scenes behind but you he, we're going back and forth about you and he goes it, i was nervous that's what he was saying like <laughs> it, it actually it turned real real quick for yeah. him like like you're really you know somebody in in, in the community of of music mm. you know and to get that it was pretty cool for for him to feel that oh like, yeah yeah for sure dude like every time i watched that trailer like because i didn't see that crowd either when what? I went to go hit, hit play at Exalted, oh yeah, I didn't see anybody either. Yeah, I just hit, like went. I like walked on stage because freaking laptop didn't play the back yeah. track. So I went out there super awkward, and everybody could see me. It was walk- dark. You could still see me. <laughs> <laughs> it was dark though. I like but walked yeah. over to the laptop and like hit the space bar, and like you know his backing track started, yeah. and I ran with him from the back of the stage to the crowd. Yeah, I seen that video, and that I was part. like, "Holy crap! There's people here." Even if it's like. People think like fifty fans is not enough, but like imagine you with like fifty people looking at you. It's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah, and that's a lot of like people outside of like like you either have no fans or you have like hundreds of thousands. And even if like it's a hundred people, fifty people, it's a lot. Yep. Yeah, it's it's real. Mm. <laughs> it's stressful. I'm not like famous, <laughs> you know, but I've got the the few I have are dedicated, dedicated. Yeah. You know, it's that's, intense. That's the difference. That's what I tell people too. Is like it, it might it might not be like, what's the word? Uh, depth, not width. Yeah, yeah. It's like they like they're like in it. Everything. Which that's what I'd rather. Yeah, I'd me prefer too. that any day. Mm-hmm. You know. Well, me to too. get my following up to up to speed in a nutshell, what it is what is it that you do? What do you mean by that? Musically, like what am I? Who am I? Yeah, I consider myself a genre switching, genre fusing artist. Is that what you're looking for? Yeah. So every project comes from a different inspiration musically. So like what you want was very hip hop, EDM, rock, electronic, uh, yeah. grunge, like modern electronic grunge almost. But I went straight from that into Uncaged, which is a horror infused. Every song is a different genre. There's a folk song on that record. There's a 
you know, EDM future pop song on that record. There's, and now my next thing is in a month, I'm going to the studio recording a four song full EP, just guitar, vocals, piano, drums. And you do that all yourself? Uh, this one, no, I don't play the guitar. Um, so I'm bringing in a collaborator, but so I'll do collaborations. I'll do solo stuff. I've done hip hop. I've done but some, some ballads. people I know, like I told them I was gonna be on a podcast and with Dan Sherman and they're all, you know, what does he do? What does he do? Yeah. I know what he does. I can't put it in words. You yeah. Know? No. And it's a lot like what you said. I, in the music industry, everyone wants you. What genre are you? You know, what is, what, what are you into? So they want to put you in a box. The first word, the first phrase I always say is genre switching because I can't, you know, just like you, I'm going to do what I'm passionate about. Yeah. You know, like I might, I love hip hop. I'll always come back to hip hop in some way, shape or form. But if I just did hip hop, my whole career would drive me crazy. I couldn't do it. You know, just, so. just with like with photos, like if you only took real estate photos for the rest of your life, you'd be bored. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where I'm with like, you know, with what I shoot too. It's like, that's why it's such a weird question. When people are like, what do you shoot? And I'm like, oh. The, the very last time I was asked that was most awkward timing, but dude asked me, what, what, what do you shoot? I'm all, I, documentary, you know, mm -hmm. it, it just, yeah, it covers enough. It doesn't explain a lot, you know, it, it, I just say documentary. Yeah. Yeah, I never know. I always say genre switching, and that's never enough. <laughs> like, people are, what does that mean? What is what genres? But it's always interesting to get asked that question. I know what you mean. So I totally resonated earlier when you were saying, you know, that you're going to do whatever you're passionate about in the moment. That's exactly how I approach music. And, you know? and this shows when, when you're not that it comes to an end or is done or is killed off, but it stopped for now. It, something yeah. else is took, you know, for, for the time being until I run it dry for myself, and then. You know, you kind of just switch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, for sure. How do you feel about people, about you giving somebody your raws? Raws. Your raw photos? No, I never do. Never? Mm. Yeah. Because, well, I, I've asked because I've had people like ask me for the raws. And that's like, in terms of like from video to photo, it's like the ungraded, uncolor graded, yeah. uncut. It's yeah. just like. I have is. never worked as a backup to another photographer i know there's opportunities that's popped up to, for me um it just didn't work out yeah timing financials wh whatever it is um some of them w did require like you give me a raw i don't know if that deterred me from shooting with them um maybe it maybe it has uh, i'm just not a fan of it mm -hmm. uh, don't be wrong i'm not a fan of editing a thousand pictures a week but I'm also not a fan of the somebody else because it's it's well, how I feel about the mo the moment, and for you to sit there and crank out a black and white when, it, in my opinion, a, it needed to be a color uh, set over saturated by 14 or you know or something of that nature. Like that's how I feel about it. Yeah. Um. That, like how you guys collaborate on that. that that's a rarity. I, I feel. Um. How you guys been going for strong for how long now? I don't even know. A year. Longer than that, right? And March it, you know, or time April it. 2020, because that's when we shot inside. It was April. Really? I looked at the files. Wow. April. That doesn't feel right, but okay. So a year. That is about a year and a mm -hmm. half. Okay. Yeah. The only thing I can think of that's to that equivalent of sending someone your raw photos that I've oh, done. I know already. I already know what you're gonna Mike, say. Mike. Working with Mike. So with the with the way that whole thing with Mike Shinoda panned out was that he. <laughs> I sent him just my vocals, no effects on it. And he like he just went crazy with the song. I was able to tell him like a vibe or a tone or different ideas, but it, it was the same thing where it's here's my vocals, do what you want. So uncomfortable. So un I mean, you feel the insecurity in A, the raw thing that you've done, but B, also not being able to control the direction yeah. that much. It's so uncomfortable. And I don't think I'll ever do that again. And I don't know if you know this. I'm glad like, I did for the record. Yeah. Like just to say that. But yeah, I'll never do that again, I don't think. <laughs> not... And, like, to put it into perspective, I don't know if you know, but, like, Mike Shinoda produced a song, like, live on Twitch mm -hmm. for, like, several weeks. So right? everyone saw everybody my raw Everybody heard, basically, basically, everybody saw your raw photos. Yeah. Scrolling Everyone heard my raw vocals. But it, it's, so like a lot of times in the beginning of the shoot, like, I'm just shooting just to kind of get my exactly. finger back on the Me groove. Me too. Yeah. yeah. You just sometimes just, like, fire off a few and, like, get a feel for it. And, like, sometimes usually don't those don't even make it in there. Yeah. 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 You got to switch lens, switch filter. If you're even using a filter, you know, polarizer, whatever it is that you're on. 
in times that like I tell people, yeah, we, yeah, we're doing a good job. And in the background, in the camera, like, no, it's, it's not. Yeah. Like I'm trying to get up to speed right now. Yep. It, it's not working, but I'm telling you, I'm, you're killing us. I don't want to kill you. Yep. And I'm trying to get me up to you and vice versa. So I, it's, it's a vibration thing for me. Is it like a, you feel naked. Yeah. You and it's naked. a control thing. Like I'm, I'm a control freak for sure. Would you agree with that? No. No? You wouldn't think so? I feel like one. Am I not? You're a very good collaborator from my, okay. from what I've seen. That's good. In the two shoots I've seen you. Yeah. You're a very good collaborator. I've seen some artists, you've seen a lot more artists than me, I'm sure, but I've been in the, around the 90s music industry. Yeah. They're, they're hard, man. Like, really? They don't know how to collaborate. So you're no, not so. <laughs> Checks out. <laughs> no, but they're, they're like, like you're willing to learn and, and grasp somebody else's concept, maybe. Yeah, and I don't yeah, know that's, if it's that's like fair. if it's just from us working together more that you've got that way. But because in the beginning, like, I was like, "You want to do that? Sure, I'll do that." I have like a. I guess what I mean by control freak is I I need to be a part of the process. That's different than to, completely hands off. Okay, yes. yeah, I need to be a part of the process, and I need to have oh, say yeah. in the process, and. At the end of the day, I need my vision to be. You know what I mean? You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, because I, I, I would feel the same way about like I've had other people edit my footage. Now I don't really care. Yeah, but I'm, I'm a little like more lenient on it. But like, because because in, would... in this situation, if you're giving someone your raw photos, you're sacrificing control. Yeah, totally. Not only that, but like, so it's not really collaboration. Not, in not that only sense, that, but right? I've been an edit- I've been an editor too, where I would see it and I'm like, why did you even send me that? Like, what yeah. is that? But you, they, they don't know. You're just trying to like find your shot. You know? Yeah. But um, I forgot where I was going with that. <laughs> it was like the fourth time this happened. What was I saying? You were talking about working with other people, collaboration. Oh yeah, control. okay. So I've handed other people like my SD card and like my hard drive that has footage that they're gonna use, and I feel like I have to like sit there and be like, okay, this shot was like it's like this because of like this is and this, and this shot is like that because like this is and this. Like yeah. I feel like like you. Yeah. I don't mind handing it over, but like I need to like be there. You need to be a part of it. I need to be a part of it. Yeah. And I actually, I think collaboration, nine times out of 10, the art's going to benefit from that. You know, once people like lose. If if you're with a collaborator with the same energy and the same drive, you know, like the art will benefit is the Mm -hmm. way I always view it. But if you can't truly, like, if you're not working with someone who's going to work with you, I like the whole hands off, like take it and run with it. That stresses me out. Me too. That absolutely stresses me out. Yeah. How do I working with other artists? If I, I'm picky. I have to know and trust who I'm working with first. You know, like I, there, there's a few collaborations that I'm hoping to do soon. And those people, they're, they're on that list because I know they're exceptional what they do. And I know that we'd vibe, but. So, you know, you're not as good as them. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, yeah. I like no, to. No, no, I like I'm, to find this, people. This, who push I'm going somewhere with this. No, yeah. I know. No, you want to find people who are going to push you because they do something better than you, for sure. There's something about being... more than push. It's pull. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Because if you're the best in, in your, it's boring. If you're the best out of your crowd, then where's the room for growth? Yeah, hundred mm-hmm. percent. And one of my favorite things about. Ooh, I guess you probably, what I've done in the last year and a half is I've just released constantly and the release, putting the stuff out there gives me accountability to have to do better next time. If I don't release it, where's the accountability for growth? So I'll release it. I'll put it out. I'm proud of it, but I also, once it's released, then I can see the flaws truly and grow. So if you listen to my records from a year ago, you would think I wrote that five years ago based on the difference between now and then. And a big part of that is like, I work with Giovanni, who's so good at production. And we just, we just learn from each other. And now we're able to switch chairs. We're able to, you know, he'll write that melody and I'll mix the melody and we'll switch like that. Even working with Christian. Yeah, that's what you know, I like about today. Different visuals yeah, and stuff like, like that. Yeah. Well, like you, you're like, let me see the mouse. And you like you, because I don't, sometimes I like, I'm sure like, you know, collaborating with like your client is like, they want something a certain way. Yeah. But it's very difficult to like take something that's in here and like give it to somebody else. Like sure. it's I, I never so had descriptive. To. I didn't know. Oh, it's I've never even part. worked with another photographer before. Really? Yeah, no. The communication's the hardest part. Mm-hmm. It's not the act of like another, doing it. It's not yeah. doing it. It's like no. it's like 
taking what because I see I see green and you see blue. How long did it take us to line up that one freaking clip oh to my the God, audio? Like Thirty minutes. Because we couldn't, we didn't realize we were saying the same thing to each other. Oh yeah, and then after that, I was like, "It's <laughs> what I've been saying." <laughs> but we were on the same page. But yeah. we just the communication of ideas when it's creative, it's hard to get the picture to reality. Because it's in here. Yeah, you, you can't, I, I can't go to the printer and print out a, a print out a black piece of paper and be like, "This is what I want." Yeah, like in my head, maybe maybe my black is like. 85% black, but his black is like 85 or 60%. Yeah. It's no, different I, shades. Yeah. And yeah. I think the biggest thing, collaboration, like there is sacrifice of control still for sure. Mm -hmm. But it's what makes a good collaborator is knowing when to sacrifice control to the person who should be in control. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's, it's just that you're going to, you're going to give, but you're going to take. It's mm -hmm. both for sure. Watching YouTube where the first shoot was actually pretty cool. And then when I finally seen the final project, you know, I know I couldn't go with you guys on the car ride. Yeah. But watching you, because it's something that you guys talk about, it, it's just jumbled to me. I'm like, all right. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like, I, I'm just, I'm three steps behind trying to jump forward with my camera and just catch it, you know? Yeah. And, and with you guys are understanding each other, and, and I, I think it's pretty cool. Because that video that finally came out, it, it was dope. Thank you. That's still uh, one I'd of my still favorites. Think, yeah, yeah, I feel the same way. And that was like the easiest one to shoot. I was lost the whole time. <laughs> That's how I felt too. I, I was <laughs> lost the whole time. Yeah. It doesn't make sense then, but like once you see it, it, everything makes sense. That communication wasn't natural for us. What? What you want? Just what he's talking about, being able to communicate ideas and execute the vision. Because you're... Well, you kind of know that in the music industry, you play a guitar. Not as much as Daniel though. But, but yeah. you understand it. And so prior to him, have you worked videos before? Music videos? Yes. Okay, you have. Yeah. But I'm also like really, 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 really picky. Well, correct me if I'm it. wrong. Our first video together was your second music video? Mm hmm Yeah. So our very first video together was his second music video. Mm hmm And it was my... First? No. Third? Third time working with a videographer. Mm hmm Second videographer I ever worked with, though. Mm hmm So since then... I mean, even we just talked about, I'm learning so much about the video side. I'm starting to understand stuff. And in the same way, he's learned the songwriting process, the mm -hmm. storyboard, pro the, not storyboard, the like developing like a, the, structure, the structure. Like, And one thing that helped me a lot was like when I watched Mike Shinoda produce a song, I'm like, oh, that's normal. Yeah. Because it's the same exact way with like music and like video and photo and like creating. Because like sometimes, like how, how, how much were you like spend editing a photo? Like 30 minutes later, you're like, nope. And you just like start over, same thing with music. And to see somebody else do it, like Mike Shinoda, he would work on his track and like he would spend like an hour and a half. Yeah. And then like he would just throw it away. Yep. And I'm like, oh, that's normal. Yeah. Like he spent the whole first session he deleted. Mm -hmm. His whole first session, he spent a whole day on it, two hours, I think. And then came in the next session. He was like, yeah, I threw all that away. We're starting over. <laughs> but that's how it is sometimes, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. But uh, it, it does help having some knowledge of the music. Well, especially like terminology. Like when he says like verse, chorus, bridge like or bars or like measures yeah. i understand like what he's saying okay. so that helps a lot but it's it's not natural you know especially when you're crossing fields it's not natural oh, to yeah. communicate and collaborate like that mm -hmm. it takes work but it's so beneficial i think but yeah. i've also all the music guys i've been with they maybe because they're early in their talent but they weren't um they they didn't have what you have when it comes to understanding or vision building mm. well it's really important because a lot of like i'll just say a lot of artists they, they'll just like say you know paint that color yellow and like in like again going back to it like they don't know what it takes to make that color yellow like you got to mix this and mix that is it yellow primary color anyway it's like if you're if, if daniel's like if i'm you know i'm not a special effects guy which use that and then Daniel's like, make my eyes purple. I'm like, what do you mean, like, make my eyes purple? Like, how do you want me to do that, you yeah. know? It's kind of the same thing. A lot of, like, people that don't have the level the level of understanding with, like, creating visual content and just like, oh, I want, like, lightning bolts coming out of my hands. It's like, what? Like, you, you know, that, that takes, like, five hours, yeah. right? Yeah. So do you remember, uh, I don't know if you know, I know you know, but if you ever followed him, Takashi 6 9 Yeah. I'm not going to get into the whole politics of him, but yeah. his early videos... Did you ever watch his early? I don't think videos? so. No. The special effects, it was so beginner. Okay. It, it, yeah. It, it's just like lightning. Where would that come from? Like, yeah. It, yeah. but you could tell, but that took a lot of work. Mm hmm. 
lot of, it, it looks kind of corny or like just go with, go with er, early movies you know yep um uh what was it pinhead or what, star wars uh what was that movie called with pinhead in it uh hell hell hellboys no hellboy um i'm thinking about pinhead larry Remember Pinhead, the guy with Pinhead? The oh, girl. oh, oh, Hellraiser. Oh, Hellraiser. Remember yeah, Hellraiser? Yeah, yeah. Like, for that time, that was great graphic. Yeah. And that took a lot of work. Yeah. And you look at it today, like, oh, that's garbage. And it's not. It, yeah. It's not. It, it's really great for its time. Mm. You know, and that still took a lot of, a lot of thinking, a lot of foreseeing of what you're trying to get. And yeah. that's what you guys do. Yeah, I try. I do think it's true. I don't think a lot of people have that. I feel often like I have vision and I'm trying to catch up the skill. Like it's the other way. I think a lot of people struggle in the opposite direction. How I don't do you know. Mean? Do you agree with that? No. I don't understand. I feel like I... Like you want something that's not attainable? I had, I had vision before I had musical ability. Oh, yeah. Like I had concepts. I had stories. I had ideas. Mm -hmm. But I had to learn the execution. And I think a lot of people learn how to make music without the visionary aspect of it. Yeah, because even like... The Does whole, that make sense? Yeah. Because I have a vision where I've been wanting to go with photography. I knew what my end game was. Yeah. Is. I'm still far from it. Mm -hmm. But I knew what it was from the very beginning before I even picked up a camera. I yeah. know where I want to go. Yeah. I still do. I still have this image in my head. I'm not going to explain it. But I have this image in my head in this particular point of, of the global earth. I'm willing to get there, but it, it's a long, it's a yeah. long road. That's yeah. coming up on 30 minutes. How long is this episode? <laughs> An hour and 20. It's not bad. That's, that's, that's like how long it was with Natasha, I think. Yeah. Oh, we should cut it then, huh? I mean, I don't care. You were right. That was very close. So I'm going to ask the very important question. We can go about this for, like, for hours. Yeah, anyway. we have no time limits. So uh, what's the story with the tattoos? That's a great oh, question. Tattoos. I was hoping yeah. to ask that question. You stole yeah. it from me. We got you. I don't talk about tattoos. Really? Yeah. Really? Okay. Why don't that. you talk about tattoos? Is that is that too much talking about it or? Not that I'm obviously not the beginner of tattoos. Yeah. But there was a um, point in time when tattoos, the art of tattooing actually had a structure to it. Okay. Today it's just it's a fad. Mm. I feel. It's a fad. Kind of like that. I'm not going to say his name, but that one artist I showed you. Yes. Yeah. I know like, what you're talking about. Yeah. That I was like, those tattoos were not there like six months ago. Yeah. And this, this artist in particular, I like his music, but like he had no tattoos like four months ago. And like now he's like covered, but it's like stupid shit. It's like bat wings and like something here and like a flower there. Yeah. It's, it's extremely small and extremely cluttered. Extremely small and cluttered. Yeah. Mm. You know, and, uh, I just, uh, I, I had a gentleman come up to me. Only tattoo on his body that was visible was yeah. the one across his throat. Okay. And he thought because I had tattoos, I was going to have respect for him because he had one on his throat. Wow. And when it was actually counterintuitive, I had no respect for you. Actually, I had less than no respect for you. Wow. Because you did that for show. Yeah. Yeah. Clearly it had no meaning to you. Yeah. And I say I every tattoo on me does have a meaning. Some of it's filler. Some yeah. of it's time in the moment. But bottom line is there's a timeline. Yeah. And I'm not fully covered yet. And I probably won't be for a very long time. But there's a, the, this timing. Yeah. And, and nobody should be filled up in a month mm. or a year. You know what I mean? Totally agree. And totally respect it. So. Yeah. Personal feel. Great answer. Yeah. I'm on the same boat. I like that. That's all I have to say. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Where can the listeners find you on social media? How can they, that website we've talked about, oh, where yeah. can they find your work? Oh, yeah, yeah. My Best way to support you. Because you two. I got, it from, I, got it, I got it from him. Yeah. I had nothing. To, okay. Linktree, man. Like this whole thing with Linktree. Like when you first said something about Linktree, I'm like, you know, why don't you just have a website? In, internal yep. thoughts, right? Yep. Yep. I'm like, then I heard you about Linktree. I'm like, what? what's this Linktree thing? I was like, why don't yep. you guys have a professional like platform? Because mm -hmm. a lot of people use this, the Instagram and Facebook as their quote unquote platform. But, yeah. You know, everybody has it. Like that. There's no, there's no structure to it. Yep. You know, and even with real quick, I'll come back to the yeah. where you can find me. Yep. So 
websites, right? I, I had a, a website builder at the time. I was doing some work, collaborating. It fell through. Like person was just lacking. They they wouldn't do the job. You know, they just kept carrot feeding me the whole time. Yeah. I was putting more work into them and they were returning the work and finally I was the fed up, you know, so I went with a professional pro um, platform to build my website, bamboozled me again, you know, for them to, to retouch it was so many thousands of dollars again later, I'm tired of it. Yeah. Built my own. So I learned how to build web build. Myself. Oh, wow. Just took it, ran, you know, um, worked on it, worked on it, worked on it. And then that's where it's at right now, both my websites. Yeah. And then getting up to speed with you guys on this link tree thing. So I'm like, I'm a website, not designer, but I'm a website builder. Like, yeah. why don't yeah. you guys have websites? And you're talking about link tree. And I think yep. link tree is like another Instagram or Twitter. And, you know, and I'm an Instagram user. I definitely love Instagram for the picture imagery and the yeah. picture guy. Yeah. And then uh, link tree. So I looked at this guy's link tree. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that's pretty dope. Yeah. Yep. Like after yep. totally bashing you guys about Link Tree, like, <laughs> dude, why don't you guys? And so, and, and I investigated your Link Tree. So you can find me on Link Tree. You know, okay. Uh, what, how's it go? Link Tree. I think it is your first Link Tree link slash link tree something. Forward slash Richard Yates. Okay. Okay. And your website is? Uh, ccfilm.co. And then, yeah, we'll stick, we'll stick up with that one. Cool, cool. CC. Yeah, we'll throw w that. W you'll get that link tree and you'll throw it up on yeah, the screen. Yeah, put I, it guess in the I, I guess I could have just done that. Yep. I could just look it up and put it in text. Yeah, you could do that too. Yeah, yeah he'll, he'll link the link tree. Yeah. Yep. Shoot, man. Link, link, done. link. Well, thank you so much for joining us, man. Oh, this was a great course. conversation. Thank you. Yes. I thank forgot you. we were podcasting for a minute there. Yeah, isn't that great? I kind of just got in it. Yeah. I was just listening too. I was quiet for a while just sitting listening to you guys. It was great. I appreciate it. That was a good one. Thank you so much. My first video. Very first appearance on a podcast. Yes. We can podcast. do it again. We can do it again. I, I'm always down to have repeat guests. Yeah. It just it's hard because like my schedule, your schedule, and then like with whoever, whoever else's schedule. So thanks for making the time. We'll definitely yeah. do a collaboration on the shoot. I'm down, bro. There you Let go. Love it. Cool. Thank you all for watching this podcast. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube or follow on Spotify or wherever the Fredonk you are listening. Denny's. Denny's. What the frick is up, Denny's? Uh, we will catch you all on the flippity flip.